Again, welcome to Statistics. In these lectures, we're going to cover the concept of descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. What is the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics? This is unit one, lecture number three. Normally, in every textbook, statistics textbook, we have three major parts. We always start with the descriptive statistics, where we learn to understand our data, data exploration. For example, we can find the mean, media, mode, variance, standard deviation, the range. This will give us the idea of the virus in our data or the mode also. Normally, if the data is quantitative, we can find the mean, media, and the mode, standard deviation, etc. If it's categorical data or qualitative, we may focus on counting and find the mode to understand our data. Then we move on to probability. Normally probability, we have three different types. We have the classical probability. For example, what's the probability that if I toss a coin, I may get a head or tail. This is classical. It doesn't based on previous studies. It's also an independent event. So since we have only two parts, head and tail, then we have half chance of getting one of the 50% or 0.5. And that's again, classical probability. Then we talk about empirical probability. Empirical probability is based on a previous event. For example, we may say, okay, from 1950 to 2020, the NASA has gone to uh, space exploration 20 times, and they have only two accident among the 20 times. So what's the probability that if NASA go to space exploration next year, uh, they may have a successful, so this will be 18 out of 20 was successful. So this will be 18 divided by 20. Now, the probability of this value is based on what happened previously. So that's empirical probability. Then we have what we call the subjective probability. Uh, subjective probability, it doesn't, base, it doesn't base on previous event, and also it doesn't base on the, pre, it normally based on the present event. For a very good example, uh, we saw tossing a coin, 50-50, or rolling a die, 1-6, because we have six parts in a die. Now, what is the probability that New York Yankee will win the World Series this year? So we cannot say that, okay, from 1950 to now, they won it, uh, let's say 10 times out of 50 times, or out of 70. So that, then here we are going to empirical probability. Because again, a team every year can change. We may have a good players, we may have a bad coach, we may have a good coach, each year things change. So this is a subjective probability. It will be based on your belief at the present moment. Again, we will go through that. So every textbook, statistics, we have descriptive probability, the inferential. Now, inferential statistics is where we're going to get a sample, test our hypothesis, then we infer, we get a decision. And with this decision, we apply it to the population. So let's go through the definition. The first one, descriptive statistics, we said it's a collection, organization, analysis, and presentation of data. So the whole idea is we are not making no decision. We just want to understand our data, uh, exploit the data. So an example of descriptive statistics would be using the frequency distribution to organize our data set or measure the central tendency, which is the mean, median, mode or measures of dispersion. Dispersion means the variation of the data. So we can find the range, variance, and standard deviation. So next is the definition of inferential statistics. Now here we say inferential statistics is to make reasonable guesses about a population characteristics using a sample data. So in statistics, we cannot use the population data because population is too large. It takes a lot of time to, again, collect the data from the whole population, also the money that will be involved. So we're always going to take a sample 
Now we are going to use that sample, test that sample using some hypothesis techniques or any inferential statistics techniques, regression analysis, etc. The result we get, we apply to the population. So inferring, that's why it's inferential statistics. We infer the decision. So inferential statistics means you have a population, for example, in New York, we have over 10 million people. Now, if I want to do a study on New Yorkers, it's impossible to collect 10 million data from 10 million people. I may take only 1,000 or 2,000 sample out of the 10 million. Most important thing is that we have different techniques of collecting sample. We collect a sample in a way that we have to minimize the bias in the sample also. We may discuss all this in the later lectures. So we have a population with unknown characteristics. We draw a sample. We test our sample. The results we get, we apply to the population. So the branches of statistics, as we said, descriptive statistics involving organizing, summarizing, and display the data. So example, tables, charts, finding the average, like central tendency, or the standard deviation, etc. Then inferential statistics is involved using the sample data to draw conclusion about the population. So example here we have the whole population is here. We took a sample of three and we are going to test the sample. The result we get, we are going to apply to all the population. So example here, they say decide which part of a study represent descriptive branch of statistics. What conclusion might be drawn from the study using inferential statistics? So here we say a large sample of men aged from 48 was studied for 18 years. Again, a large sample of men, their age is 48, was studied for 18 years. For unmarried men, approximately 70% were alive at the age of 65. For married men, 90% were alive at the age of 65. So the question now is that we should decide which part of the study represents descriptive branch of statistics and what conclusion might be drawn from the study using inferential statistics. So here the descriptive statistics involves a statement such as for unmarried men. Now we understand the data is about unmarried men. The approximately 70% were alive at the age of 65. And for married men, 90% were alive at the age of 65. Now, a possible inference draw from the study is that, based on this, we can see that men live long, married men live longer than unmarried men. So, the possible inferential draw from the study is that being married is associated with a longer life for men. So, again, this will be the conclusion of our lectures on the whole concept of the difference between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Again, descriptive statistics is to describe our data, understand the data, explore the data. Then inferential statistics use a sample from the population, make a decision, test the sample. The decision you get applied to the population. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.